Hello and welcome. Let's take a minute to look at the new Cursor Crosshair Cursor Coordinates feature in Spectra Layers 9. Listen to this historic audio sample. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Well, this is a real blast from the past, and in more ways than one. We've used this clip for demos ever since the first version of Spectra Layers. I'm opening it up here because it's a great way to show off the new cursor features. I'll change the layer color to blue so that you can see the feature better. Here, I'm also adjusting the resolution for more detail. Okay. In the view menu, select cursor crosshair. And here it is. The crosshair lines span the entire spectral graph, so you can get a nice visual lock on things. Okay, zooming in a little here. Here I'm going back into the view menu and adding the cursor coordinates option. And now we have time and frequency coordinates on the cursor, which makes it really easy to get readings on the hum bands here, which I assume are artifacts from the communication systems of the day. Over here in the tools panel, I'll select the sampler tool, and now I can get amplitude information as well, or pick from a list of different data to obtain. That's the feature, but as long as I'm here, Let's do something to the sample. I'm going to bring up the new Unmix Levels process. This is a new feature in Spectra Layers Pro 9, and we explore it in several of the other launch videos. There's one for music, one for post, and now here's one for repair and restore operations. Let's preview the process at the default threshold of minus 24 dB. That's one small step for man. And that's an example of real-time preview in action. Okay, let's perform the process. Now I'm going to solo the high-level layer. Now let's hear the low-level layer. Back at the new cursor feature, and with the sampler tool open, you can see that the minus 24 dB amplitude level shown in the high level layer, at this point on the graph, corresponds to the default setting that we found in the unmixed levels process dialog. The hum band here has the same amplitude signature as Armstrong's spoken words. The sound of the hum is still clearly audible in the low-level layer. One possible next step here would be to extract the hum from the high-level layer and bring its volume down in the layers panel. The residual hum in the low-level layer would still be there, of course, but it might be more well-blended and easy to listen to while maintaining the historical audio context. We'll address this in a future Spectre Layers 9 livestream presentation. This data display tool upgrade will really help you set thresholds with precision. And of course, this is a big improvement over the previous trial and error workflow. The new cursor features, in combination with the new real-time preview function in Spectre Layers 9, will allow you to craft your workflow in any way you like. <laughs>